Hey guys, sorry for the kind of rush video. This is more of an update to my older video about using GameCube controllers on Nintendo. Don't. Uh, this isn't really scripted or anything, it's just a quick update. A lot of people have been having problems with my old method, and that's because it's a few years out of date. So now I'm going to show you the modern version and kind of how it works. So launch your homebrew channel any way you want. Uh, I have a forwarder, um, but you can just launch it normally through the Wii channel option and then click on whatever. But important, if you do have a forwarder like I do and it asks you if you want to use the Wii U gamepad as a controller, make sure you say no. That's kind of important. Next, you'll want to boot into Wiimote. It'll ask you to point the Wiimote at the screen, so you will need one Wiimote for this option. We'll also be using this Wiimote to actually start up Nintendo, so make sure you have like a spare Wiimote. Uh, then you're going to have to point at the TV, and you can say TV and gamepad if you want. I'm just using the gamepad because it's easier to record, but you can use TV only just to save power. Alright, once we're in the homebrew channel, you should be able to go ahead and load up Nintendo. And again, it does not matter how you actually load up Nintendo. You can use a forwarder, you can use a shortcut, whatever. As long as you get into Nintendo somehow with one Wiimote connected, you should be good. So now we're going to go ahead and connect to the adapter. I'm going to connect it before we start Nintendo, but I don't think it matters. Um, there are two cables with this. You have a black one, which is for data. And then the white one, I believe, is just for power for like, you know, stuff like Rumble. So the black one has to go in one of the back USB ports because when you're booted in the classic Wii mode, you only have access to data through the back two ports. So if you wanted to, you could try to plug in the gray cable in the front, but there's not much slack in the cable. You can peel it apart if you want, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, no matter what your setup's like, you have to have the black cable in the back. You can use an extension cable or whatever, get gray in the front, but black has to be in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And the reason why you may want to have only one cable in the back is because if you're using a USB hard drive or something, that also has to be plugged in the back. So make sure that you have your black cable in the back, and if you don't want rumble, you can just leave the gray cable unplugged. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and start up Nintendo. Alright, here's the update version. As you can see, it says SD card or USB drive. Now what you can actually do once you're at the screen is disconnect your Wiimote. I've actually found that sometimes if you leave the Wiimote connected, it will override controller slot 1 on your GameCube controllers. So that means that player 1 just won't be able to play. So I suggest once you get to the screen, just pull the battery out of your Wiimote and that should disconnect it. Then just put it somewhere where it won't get bumped and turn back on. Um, but once you're in here, you should be able to actually use a GameCube controller to navigate the menus. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and load up a game. I think I'm going to go for 20XX. And as you can see, it loads up just fine. No problems here. Uh, player 1 works and it was plugged in. You can plug in more controllers or whatever you want. Um, if you want to know what my settings look like, you can see them right here. If you remember previously, we had an HID controllers option. That's no longer here. Um, but everything else should be about the same. I have the force widescreen on because it just looks better on these modern TVs. Um, but I think I just pretty much left everything else alone. Uh, if you still have problems, you can try using my settings. Hey, maybe it will work. If it still doesn't work, you can try turning off widescreen and stuff, but other than that, it should be fine. And as you can see, this even supports some weird controllers, like DK Bongos work just fine out of the box. I did have to plug in a second controller slot so I could actually, you know, navigate the menu to launch the game. But ever since then, it seems to be running fine. Um, keep in mind that any t modern TV will probably have at least a little bit of lag in it. So if you're trying to run music rhythm games, definitely make sure you have game mode turned on. And you should have a good experience. So, all right. I hope this video helped. Uh, sorry about the, you know, lack in quality. I normally script everything, but this is just a quick and easy video. I just wanted to have everyone updated. So, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask below. But, yeah, it's significantly easier now. So, uh, enjoy Nintendo, and I guess I'll see you guys later. Bye.